Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us uh, for today's webinar, Step-by-Step -step Accounting Guide for Amazon Sales and VAT with Zero and A2X. Big thank you to our expert hosts today, Oliver and Steve Blackmore from Elver eCommerce, uh, who are one of the UK's premier e-commerce accounting practices, as well as Elbeth, uh, Elsbeth Cordray, who is the head of uh, customer success in the UK, leading a team of 11 uh, UK support team members. So from that point, I'm just going to pass the mic over to Steve, who's going to talk a little bit about Elver e-commerce and why they're so well suited uh, to talk to today's topic, which is Amazon sales and VAT accounting. So Steve, over to you. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Um, we are the, the go-to financial partners for UK e-commerce businesses. Each e-commerce business is unique as determined by its size, the owner's aspirations, the product it sells, the channels and territories it sells in, and we tailor our services to each client to meet its unique needs. Our expertise will help free you up to focus on innovating, selling, and growing your business. We specialize in e-commerce because it is genuinely different to other types of businesses and faces a unique set of challenges in terms of its finances, whether that's the daily bookkeeping routine, tax compliance, forecasting, or performance tracking. And our vision is for every e-commerce business in the UK to be armed with precise financials and insights, empowering them to run successful growth oriented operations. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you again for attending our Amazon and VAT accounting webinar. We hope that you'll have some takeaways from this that will be really useful going forward. Um, we're going to cover three areas and then we're going to have a question and answer session. Our first area is why accurate Amazon and VAT accounting is key to profitability. Um, as e-commerce sellers or accounts and bookkeepers who support e-commerce sellers, um, I think our main goal is always to have profitable, healthy businesses um, and having accurate financial information helps you to make good decisions going forward and also make sure that you're taking care of all your responsibilities in terms of VAT and other tax requirements. The second area we're going to cover is how to accurately automate Amazon and VAT accounting. I'm going to give you a quick overview of some of what A2X can help you with in that area. And then we're going to have a third section on what to consider when using Amazon plus A to X plus zero. We've got some checklists that I hope you're going to find really useful for your month end processes and also some discussion on reporting. So using this financial information to have good insights to make good business decisions. We're going to follow that up with a question and answer session. So as Jeff already mentioned, if you have some questions already, please feel free to start putting them in chat. Um, but at the end, we'll open the floor and be able to talk to Steve and Oliver about some of the other questions that you may have as you go through the webinar. So top level overview, as we spoke about profitability and healthy businesses, we do know that unfortunately 32% of e-commerce businesses fail because they run out of cash. We also know that 29% fail because of cost and pricing imbalances. That's a really big one for e-commerce. And we're going to cover some of the um, ways that you can um, check and keep track of your cost accounting later on in this webinar. Another um, trend that's noticed is that many businesses fail because they do try to scale too quickly. And all of these areas can be helped by having really accurate financial information. Um, now, as you know, we're so excited to have Elvis here today. Oliver and Steve are on the front line of supporting e-commerce businesses as they grow um, and to have accurate accounting information. And so I'm just going to give Steve the floor just now to share a couple of stories from their experiences so far. There's actually quite a few um, examples of um, how things have, have gone wrong and how things have, have gone very well. Um, for um, some of our existing clients, but of course, all the uh, the bad stuff happened before they were clients. Two in particular um, spring to mind. Um, the, the, the common thing with 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 all of these is that they did actually engage with um, accountants, but of course, they were they were not e-commerce specialists. And um, in two instances, they had. Um, under-recorded sales and under-reported their, their VAT liabilities to the extent of um, over £100,000. In one instance, um, this was discovered because the, the owner um, just happened to read something online and realised that uh, the way it was being done was, was wrong, despite all the assurances he had uh, to the contrary. Um, 
in the other case, um, unfortunately, HMRC had initiated an inquiry, but um, we were able to step in and um, do all the calculations and, and smooth that whole process. In, um, in another example, um, the issue wasn't um, a case of record under-recording. Well, it was a case of under-recording. It wasn't a case of simply recording their net settlements as, as income. In this case, it was done manually. And Amazon changed the way that changed the reports that they were using, and it took them about a year and a half to realise that um, it was yeah that their numbers were all wrong as a consequence of of using a report that they thought was was based on uh, different numbers. Uh, on a more positive note, in fact, that very same client that I just mentioned, um, they were not getting any any management accounts on a monthly basis. They're now getting those, and we've done additional analysis since and that has highlighted to them the fact that their um, Amazon sales which is about 50% of their business um, is um, well they've actually been quite shocked at how um, how un unprofitable that Amazon sales are so they're now um, about to make some some very crucial um, strategic decisions um, as to how they take that forward. Right. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to be talking a bit today about why it's so important to get your Amazon accounting right. Um, but before I do, I think I ought to solve the mystery of why there are hundreds of balloons uh, behind us in the office. Uh, we are in uh, the, the midst of uh, tax season here. Uh, and actually, each balloon represents a tax return that we need to file. So we've got a bit of a, a challenge going on with the team and each time we file a return we're popping a balloon and there are prizes to be won so it's keeping us all uh, excited throughout tax season uh, so anyway um so why is amazon accounting so important and why, why do we need to get it right so first point to make is with regards to how your settlements get paid out so typically for most amazon sellers you're going to be getting one settlement every fortnight. So nearly every payout you're going to receive is going to be overlapping on your on your month end. So in order to get an accurate monthly P&L, those settlements need to be split out to put each uh, month's relevant part of a settlement into the right month. Um, if, you, if you're not doing that, you're, you're going to end up with um, margins that are essentially all over the place uh, month to month. To take an extreme example, you could have one month where you've got potentially six weeks worth of sales and think, woohoo, I've had a fantastic month. And then the next month comes around and then you've, you've only got a couple of weeks worth of sales because of how those settlement periods have fallen. So it's really important to be getting uh, those split out. Um, there are also lots of different transaction types within a settlement, uh, the ones you can see on the screen there, so sales adjustments, commission, uh, reimbursement fees, taxes, are just a couple of examples that there are literally um, hundreds of different transaction types um, and, and subtypes within uh, those transaction types as well. So to get an accurate idea of what's going on in the business, you really need to be analyzing those out uh, much further than just looking at your net payouts. Um, and, and the other uh, key point to make really is that if you're not doing that analysis and, and uh, exploding your payouts, you're almost certainly going to be making mistakes in filing your VAT returns. Um, it could be that you're overpaying, could be that you're underpaying. More likely than not, if you're not exploding your payouts, you're going to end up in a position where you're underpaying your VAT and, and then you're sort of treading down the path of um uh, ending up in a position where you might get penalties uh, from HMRC further down the line. Um, so this is an example of what uh, a fortnightly Amazon settlement looks like. Uh, so here we've got uh, 60K or just over 60K coming into the bank. And that left hand side there, if, if you've got zero set up uh, and you've got your bank view connected, that, that's all the information you're going to get. Uh, is if we look on the right hand side, this is the kind of analysis that you're, you're going to be wanting to get with, with a tool like A2X. 
Uh, and it's really important to analyze out between those different categories. So taking a couple of examples we've got on the screen here. So Amazon FBA fees, for example, are subject to what's known as the reverse charge mechanism. So essentially what that means is that they are services that Amazon bill your UK company for from the EU. Uh, and there is no VAT to reclaim on those fees. However, the advertising fees are billed from the UK and therefore there is VAT to reclaim. So you can start to see how if you're not analysing those payouts out, um, you're, you're likely to end up in a position where you're making VAT mistakes. Um, so this is uh, one of the really common errors that we see and kind of ties back in with the, the, the horror stories that Steve was mentioning. Um, so it's quite common to see that um, Amazon sellers will just be treating their net deposit as, as their income. And in every case, that is going to be wrong and, and result in some VAT mistakes. Um, so let's have a look at um, what problems that causes. So if, if you're not analyzing out between the different constituents of, of a payout, you're almost certainly going to end up in a position where you're understating or, or overstating, but more likely understating your tax liabilities. You're going to have skewed profits. Uh, so not going to give you the insight you need to make decisions. You also won't have any information with regards to fees within your accounting data. And as I mentioned earlier, you're going to have a lumpy month and month PL um, because of those timing issues with the, the fortnightly settlements. Um, and, and the main issue that, that all those points really feed into is that when you come to sell, uh, a potential acquirer is going to want to see the last few years worth of, of books. And, and, and if they haven't got the detailed analysis within them that shows the full breakdown of revenue and fees, that they're not going to be able to make a, an informed decision um, on, on whether to move forward with acquiring your business. Um, and then at, at the best case scenario, you're looking at needing to go away and, and redo uh, your books to, to help facilitate that sale. Um, but uh, in, in a lot of cases, if, if you came to a potential acquirer and, and your accounting data was all just based on net deposits, the, the reality is you're going to have a, a potential acquirer that's walking away from the deal and then you go and redo your books, but then you're still needing to find a, a, a new acquirer. Um, so an, another really common issue we see is uh, treating the VAT received on, on your payouts as, as additional revenue. So it's really important that that gets split out and mapped into your balance sheet and recorded as a liability. Um, otherwise, your P&L is, is going to be significantly wrong. Um, so that leads to quite a few different issues. Uh, so one uh, being that if you've recognized that VAT as, as revenue in your accounts, you're going to be painting uh, a much prettier picture to yourself than, than the reality and, and be spending uh, money that is essentially yours. It's, it's not yours, it's, it's money that is owed to HMRC as part of your, your VAT returns. Um, so um, that, of course, in turn leads to compliance issues with HMRC in that you're not paying the, the VAT that you need to be. Um, and if, if you're accounting for VAT as revenue in your p &L, you, uh, and your all your sales are standard rated, then you're going to be overstating your, your revenue by, by 20%. Uh, for a typical Amazon seller, a 20% gross margin would be pretty healthy. And if that's the picture you're painting to yourself by including VAT in your income, then the reality could be that you're you're just breaking even. Um, and another really important point to make for UK sellers looking to expand out into the EU is that when you do so, you'll need to be separately tracking your EU VAT liabilities. Um, and it gets even more complicated when it comes to EU VAT, because depending on the circumstances of the sale, it may be that Amazon is responsible for collect, collecting and remitting the VAT under the marketplace rules, or it may be that you need to uh, pay that VAT on, on your VAT return separately. So it's important 
to then be able to split out between marketplace and non-marketplace rule sales uh, to get your EU, EU VAT correct. Um, so to summarize all of that, that why, essentially, if you're not accounting accurately, you have limited insight into profitability and business performance and could be over or underpaying tax. And in reality, most cases, you will be an underpaying tax. Um, so back over to Elspeth now to talk more about uh, how A2X can help. Thank you, Oliver. So Oliver's done a great job of explaining some of the challenges when it comes to dealing with e-commerce deposits. And um, we're just going to do a quick overview of A2X and how that can help. Um, A2X, um, it pulls all the uncategorized data that we get from those e-commerce platform for sales, fees, refunds, taxes, disputes, advertising fees um, from all of your channels and will consolidate it all into neat payouts for you. If, you, um, if you've ever done that manually, <laughs> you'll know how, how time saving it is to be able to automate that part of the process. A2X auto categorizes the data into accurate summaries that span the right time periods. We spoke about that with Oliver. It's important that um, fees and sales are accounted for in the correct accounting period and A2X will automatically split them for you. And then we match back to zero with one click reconciliation back to the bank account. So, you know, we're always looking for that magic green match on the zero bank feed for Amazon deposits. Um, in the last few years, we've in introduced a number of new automation features, such as auto-approved invoices, which can give you that really fast zero bank reconciliation that everyone's looking for. The brilliant thing about this is that having all that data transferred quickly into zero gives you the ability to then view it in zero in various different ways. Um, it let you see your profitability accurately when you run your profit and loss report. If you look at this one over on the right, you'll see that we've actually been able to, this is a seller selling on eBay, Shopify, and Amazon. Uh, we've been able to split those transactions, also split some of the costs out. Um, you can even refine it more than this. If you've got particular customizations, we have people doing very clever things for tracking categories. So if you've got particular uh, reports you want to be able to run, uh, zero tracking categories are very profitable. So if you've got um, very useful, for example, if you want to see, you know, how profitable am I on one e-commerce platform compared to another? So always chat with us in chat if you want to do some more customizations or you've got an idea for something you want to do with your zero reports and we'll try and help as much as we can. A2X uh, has been delivering accurate accounting for Amazon sellers in the UK since 2013. It's really hard to believe it's been that long, but it has. Um, we were very excited in 2022, we won zero at Partner of the Year. And we do have thousands of five-star reviews from sellers and their accountants. We, we try and provide really good support. We understand it's complex and we want to support you as much as we can to be successful using A2X and zero. So now we're going to move on to the third part of our webinar, which is just um, examining some month-end processes that you can use, that you can implement when using A2X and zero together. Um, to get the best outcome and the best reporting. So for this month end process, you're going to want to gather a few pieces of information. It's always useful to have. Um, you're going to want to have your monthly bank and or credit card statements. Obviously, you'll have your zero bank feeds, but it's always good to be able to refer back to the originals. Uh, we always recommend having access to the Amazon tax document library and Amazon Seller Central. You can find that bit by going to reports and tax document library. The important part about that is that's where you can access all of your fee invoices from um, Amazon. And as Steve mentioned earlier on, those can vary depending on the type of invoice there is in that document library. And so it's always good to be able to go and check and see the actual tax rates. So, for example, UK advertising, we often see does have 20% VAT applied. The third thing that it's good to have to hand is your Amazon loan statement. If you are repaying a loan via settlements in Amazon, A2X will pick that up. Um, but it's good to have that documentation to refer to as well as you wrap up the month. And then the last um, thing that you're going to want is your invoices for purchases of stock. So where you've purchased items to sell on Amazon, you're going to want to have those ready to enter into zero and make sure you can match those back to your bank as well. 
So step one is to review your transactions. Um, you would first start by going to A2X and updating any mappings that might be required. So anywhere where you need to assign a tax or a tax rate or an account. Um, and then you can send your invoices through to zero. One thing we always like to flag up is that when you're on Amazon EU, we do have um, a waiting period for finalized Amazon VAT data. Um, it usually finalizes on the 4th of the following month. So for example, for a period March 25th to April 5th, this would be on hold until May the 4th. Until that date, settlements will be marked on hold in A2X. And we do recommend waiting until that date to post those periods, as then you'll have the full country data for VAT purposes, especially important if you have multiple tax jurisdictions. We do have a workaround if you need to close a month earlier. So um, you talk to support if you need help and you do need to close your month earlier than that. The next step is to raise any purchase invoices in zero for any stock that you've purchased um, during the period and then match those off to your bank feed. And then to you know finish your bank reconciliation, you'll most likely, um, after you've matched all the Amazon deposits to A2X data and you've raised your purchase invoices, you'll most likely have some other transactions to reconcile. So once that's finished, you can then move on to the next step. And for our step four, we've said um, that a good process is to check for any duplicate invoices or bills after reconciliation. <laughs> One thing we do see sometimes is if you did have, you, you, you were seeing a missing settlement in A2X, then it's often that Amazon has just archived it. It's a relatively simple process to release it. You can go to Amazon Seller Central reports, payments and all statements and um, confirm that they're available for direct download. If they're not, you can normally click a button and it'll, they'll be ready in a few seconds and then you'll be able to fetch them into A2X. If you have any troubles with that, just let us know and we'll we'll help you work around it. Just one point to mention on the, the duplicated uh, invoices or uh, duplicated bills, is a common issue we, we come across is that it's often a bit too easy to be a bit too eager to get things reconciled on the bank feed and you'll create a spend money or receive money transaction to get something off the bank feed. And that's what's actually then duplicating the invoice or bill that's come through further down the line. So that's another thing to watch out for as part of step four. That's a really good point, Oliver, yeah. Okay, so the next step, we're getting down into fine tuning at this point, um, is to review the Amazon pending balances account. Um, I know, Steve, you must see this all the time. So I was going to ask you to jump in at this point and explain your processes for this part. Well, it's the same with, uh, to a large extent, pending, reserved and carried. They're all very similar um, in that any, any balance on that account should represent um, the the pending reserved or carried balance at the end of the month and they should reverse um, at some stage during during the following month in the case of carried balances it should normally re reverse on on the first of the following month so you really need to just be checking that um your 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 pending reserved or carried balances in your balance sheet do represent the the, the last settlement of, of the month if there's any other um, balances in there then it possibly that you've missed a settlement or something like that but your your pending balances in your in your balance sheet should reconcile uh, to to the final final settlement of the month yeah i think another point to mention on that is a, a good check to do is to, to run an account transaction report for the pending the reserve or carried balances and then on that account transaction report you can nice and easily see the pending reserve or carried balance getting created and then you can see it mid-month getting reversed back out and therefore clearing back down to, to zero that, that gives you confidence that, that that's working nicely it, it's one of the most common errors we come across when we've uh, worked with clients that have previously worked with a non-e-commerce specialist accountant that is using a2x they're often un unaware of that nuance and then there's a bit of a, a backdated work to tidy up um, those those carried, carried balances. Yeah, that's really helpful. And we do know as well, sometimes when there's a marketplace where transactions volumes are, no, are low, the net value of the settlement may be negative, but they still need to be posted, especially to yes. uh, make sure that pending balances and their reserve balances account are married up correctly. All right, so we might need the slide before just on the inventory 
reconciliation. Yep. So this is the part where we account for costs. Um, A2X has a cost of goods sold feature, which works well. And it allows you to give a very balanced P&L and show um, what your actual cost of goods sold for the period were. So the process for that in A2X is usually to update any missing costs in A2X. That will happen if you've you know, added a new SKU in the last month. You may need to add a cost in the cost table. And we also have a live Google Sheet you can update now if you prefer that method. Um, and then you'll record the COD COGS in A2X by sending those periods through to zero. They're sent separately from the main settlements. After that, you can review your month-end inventory balance. One thing we always like to flag up with A2X COGS is that it just adjusts for sales. And so a manual adjustment is still required at month-end to adjust for sellable returns, removals, adjustments, and reimbursements. And a lot of that information you can access in Seller Central. Okay, so digging deeper, um, I'd be interested to get um, Oliver and Steve's input on the first point, which is just reviewing the Amazon pending reserve carry balances for foreign exchange differences, which does happen if you have different EU marketplaces with different currencies. Yeah, so th this relates to what we were just talking about in terms of seeing that those pending and reserve balances are cleared down. However, when you've got the, the foreign currency marketplaces, the invoices will come through in the foreign currency that that marketplace operates in. So then that, this is a timing delay between the, the pending balance coming in and going back out. During that time, the foreign currency rates move and therefore each time those balances are released, there is a foreign currency gain or loss that will end up sitting on your pending or reserve balance account. And therefore you need to identify those and write them off manually to the P&L in order to keep those accounts tidy. So the next step in the process is to review our VAT transactions report. Obviously, part of this um, information that you've sent through from A2X will be used for your VAT return. And when you're a UK seller and or selling in the EU, you will have different VAT rates. So you may have some zero rated products, you may have standard rated products. Um, you may have transactions that actually fall into a different jurisdiction as per the Amazon VAT transactions report and that is all it's possible to slice and dice all of those accurately using A2X and we also filter out as we mentioned earlier marketplace facilitator tax that's where marketplace rules have been triggered um, we've got a great article on this we're going to follow up with which um, Steve has written which gives some more detail on marketplace rules which are super useful if you're selling in the EU and so when you're reviewing your transactions report, you're going to be, those are the things you're going to be keeping an eye out for. Um, and again, I'm just going to ask Oliver and Steve to speak about this because I think they have a lot of experience with submitting some of these uh, VAT returns. Yeah, so certainly when it comes to f filing your, your UK VAT return, you want to be reviewing that transaction report to identify any anomalies um, in, in, in the mapping. Uh, it's, it's a good sort of final sense check on 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 the work you've done to, to spot any potential opportunities where you, to to save VAT. Perhaps you've got a MFT transaction and you've accounted for that on it, and you don't need to. That reviewing that transaction report does help you to pick those up, um, and, a, and then a find and recode and a update of mapping um, for the next quarter or a month is, is is the way to keep on top of that. That's right. And I'm guessing, Steve, you do have sellers where they have both VAT and GS GST and other tax requirements. So you'll be splitting out and checking those accounts as well. Is that right? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, after you've completed all those things, you're happy with your, the, VAT, the VAT transactions that are going through to the VAT report. You can then review your inventory balance and valuation. Um Okay, so based on all of this data that's been pushed through, categorized correctly for VAT and all the other types of transactions that we see, um, you should now be able to run in zero your profit and loss report and your balance sheet and see your accurate up-to-date figures for that month. Um, one of the benefits of automating this process, speeding up, spending less time on the manual bookkeeping side, is that it frees you up to be able to add value to your customers or to your own understanding of your own business and um, by being able to look at these numbers quickly and easily without hours of prep work to get there. Um, and I know that Elva's 
you guys provide a management reporting pack to your customers and maybe you can tell us a bit more about that and how you use some of this information to help them um i think um actually the example that i was i was talking about uh, at the beginning um is um is, is a really good one in that um they, well that those those management reporting packs include um obviously the, the basics in terms of profit and loss accounts and balance sheets and cash flows um graphical analysis of trends and kpis um but you know you, you can do more detailed analysis whether that's um channel analysis which um in the example i gave before uh, was was quite revealing uh, for that particular client um but they 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 really kind of tailor made um for each individual in in the individual business um and can sometimes you know go into a great deal of detail especially if they're um you know multi channel selling internationally and they're also really useful for when you get to the point where you want to start thinking about exiting the business uh, those management reporting packs are exactly what a potential acquirer are going to want to see to get more understanding of your financial performance so one thing we do like to flag up um you may be an accountant and bookkeeper and you may be um supporting e-commerce clients in which case a lot of these processes will be helpful we do recommend um that if you're a seller um that you do engage an experienced e-commerce accountant and bookkeeper it can make all the difference in the world having someone who understands e-commerce working on your books and um, we do have a directory you can filter it by country and by software elvers you can see them there in quite a place at the top of our uk page um so yes we do we do recommend that we can automate all the processes but um it's really important to have someone looking over it all who knows what they're doing and understands e-commerce. You can also try A2X for free if you go to www.a2xaccounting.com and um the UK team are online and ready to chat with you as well if you have any further questions after after the webinar. Awesome. Well, great job everyone. Thanks so much for taking us through this incredibly meaty topic. So, uh, appreciate your expertise and your time. This is now um, the impasse in which we start to get through everyone's questions. So we have a few that have rolled in, and I'm going to start with the first one. I'm planning to expand in other countries. Are there any VAT considerations I should be aware of? Who's going? You go. You go. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Um, it's going. Obviously, it's going to depend on the territory. Uh, but it's also going to uh, depend on the channels that you're you're using. I mean, we, we are primarily talking about Amazon here. So um, in the EU, for instance, uh, they do have um, marketplace facilitator rules, which means that um, Amazon is responsible for um, paying the VAT on your sales. So if you... Um, if you can compare that to a UK sell, if, if for instance, you're um, selling something for um, £120, Amazon, obviously, after they've deducted fees, would remit to you £120. Um, in the case of the EU, um, they would take off the VAT, pay that to the relevant tax authority and um, pay you £100, um, depending on the territory, because the VAT rates throughout the EU do, do, do vary. Um, so although you're only receiving 100, you don't then have to pay anything to the, the tax authorities. But if you're using um, Amazon FBA, for instance, um, and therefore storing inventory in any country, that's going to require that registration uh, in that country. Um, and additionally, um, if um, you have any sales to other businesses, so B2B sales, um, they are not subject to the marketplace mm. facilitator rules, and therefore you would have to account for the, the VAT on those sales. Uh, if you take the uh, the states, um, they also have um, marketplace facilitator rules um, in, in in every state now, uh, and that's, that's something that's been changing uh, over the years. Uh, if you go back a couple of years, probably less than half the states had marketplace facilitator rules, so you'd be accounting for that, that GST in some states and not in others. But um, fortunately, we're now in a position where uh, that's um, throughout the, the, the you know, all, all the states. Um, and other places, you know, other territories do have marketplace rules as well, but, um, that, you know, that, that varies. So um, in some instances, you would need to register for GST, which is the you know, the VAT equivalent outside the EU. Um, and um, 
in other cases you wouldn't you just need to uh, speak to us uh, about which territories you're um, intending to, to sell in awesome you know, the, the other point to mention with those sort of other territories outside the eu as well is that some will have thresholds so you can make x amount of sales before you need to register whereas other, others you might have to register before you make your first sale okay great um, I guess that that's a really good segue around registration. Do I need to register for a UK VAT number if I'm based outside of the UK but selling to UK customers? Yes. So the UK VAT registration threshold is £85,000, but that doesn't apply if you are a business based outside the UK or if you are a UK-based business selling uh, fulfilling from outside the UK. In both instances there, the VAT registration threshold wouldn't apply and you'd want to register for VAT in the UK before you start selling. Got it. Awesome. The other question, this one's for Elsbeth. Um, how does A2X handle VAT from cross-border sales within the EU? Yeah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> so with Amazon, we have something that's really useful, which is the Amazon VAT transactions data that we get. So we always recommend that if you're selling in the EU and the UK, that you enable the VAT calculation service in Seller Central. It's really easy to enable it, and it gives you a much higher level of um, information on your VAT transactions. And what it allows us to do is split out your transactions depending on a number of different criteria. Um, and your own particular VAT requirements. So we can split out GB sales, we can split zero rated sales, we can put split sales where Amazon has collected and remitted the VAT for you, which is super useful and avoids you remitting VAT twice on the same sale, which we've seen. Um, and we split out B2B sales and various other kind of nuances we can catch in the data that allows you to get a really tight um, number for your VAT. So you're not overstre you know you're, you're not um you know just blanket applying 20 percent to all your uk sales or other sales where you actually could be saving a little bit there um and oh. we that inf that set of inf information we get from amazon is really reliable and um yeah that's what we that's what we use mostly fantastic so that that's that's what we mean when we say accuracy <laughs> yeah. um so the last question I have here, unless anyone has any more that they want to add, is A2X making tax digital compliant? Good question. Yes, we have an article about that we can provide afterwards if anyone's interested and wants to read with some HMRC notices. So yes, we believe so. We're compliant in different ways depending on the e-commerce platform. So with Amazon, they give you that one consolidated settlement period and we match back to that, which according to HMRC's most updated regulation seems to be acceptable. With um, Shopify, we'll do something slightly different. We actually give you daily summaries um, where you're using third-party payment methods as HMRC seems to have a different approach for that type of payment method. But yes, we've got, if anybody wants to take a deep dive into making tax digital, we do have an article on that we can share. Awesome. We should share that in the follow-up. So I will yes, add that can, to, my, yeah. to my list of to-dos. What, what so that point to mention on that, that question as well is that when, when the A2X assessments are pushed through into zero, the attachment includes all of raw data. So it's very easy if you do have any kind of HMRC inspection for them to, to see how the, the invoices A2X is creating tie back to the, the, the raw data from the marketplace yeah awesome. that's super super useful cool so that looks to be it in terms of our questions uh so before we hop off i just wanted to say a big thank you again to oliver steve and elsbeth for sharing your expertise during today's webinar. We will be sending a follow-up email with all of this information and more. And if you have any questions, as Elspeth mentioned, we do have quite a large uh, UK support team, primarily comprised of actual accountants and bookkeepers who also have worked with e-commerce in the past. So incredibly well-suited to help you um, on your journey to using A2X. And then for more accounting insights, finance insights, and just kind of the expertise to help you make sense of the numbers, file VAT returns, uh, we all obviously have the Elver team here who's just uh, incredible and have been doing this for, for quite a long time and have, as you can see, tremendous amount of expertise in this area. So thanks again.